Hi, it's Paul from OneSpoonAtATime.com. In this screencast video, I want to just walk through the steps that I did and did a detailed article on in the post that you can see in front of you that's on my website. That post called How to Set Up a Professional Looking Website Using WordPress. And what I'm going to do, and hopefully it's going to take about 10 minutes, is show you how you can set up a website using WordPress. A lot of people associate WordPress WordPress as just blogging software and it is blogging software but you can also use it to set up more traditional style websites. The style of website I've got has got static pages and then one blog page which is the post or page you can see highlighted in white there on the horizontal nav bar which says blog. Um, I've set up a test blog at wordpress.com which you can set up a test blog there or a blog um, and it has a lot of the features of WordPress, doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the version you, you'll get if you actually host your own website, but it's got enough for our purposes. Here's the dashboard of that blog. Now, when, once you set it up, you automatically get an about page. Here's what the standard page looks like before we've done any alterations. And you can see there are some similarities to what we had on the One Spoon website, but we, there's still a bit of tweaking we need to do to get it to look more like the One Spoon website and model that structure. So the first thing that we're going to do, the first step that we're going to take is we're going to add some pages. And we're just going to add some blank page titles. Um, we're going to add one. I know there was one that said home, but we're going to add another one that says home. Every time you press publish, that will create a new page. And all we're doing simply is just creating blank pages at the moment. Um, but by doing that, WordPress will put these blank pages in the horizontal nav bar that you saw on the One Spoon website. I'll show you in a minute when I've created all of the pages. I mean, just the internet is a bit slow here at the moment. It's Saturday night, so people are using it for stuff. Um, so I'm just literally walk through. Remember. Literally all you do to create the page is press, press the blue publish button on the right hand side. Um, and then when you want to add a new one, just click on the add new button. Okay, let's do the next one, which is called products. Press publish. I think we've got two to, do, two to go. I think we've got resources and subscribe. So let's do the next one. Let's do resources. Okay, let's enter the title. Press publish again, and then we've just got subscribe to do. Okay, press add new again. And I'm deliberately, I could have edited this out and then said, okay, that's how you do one. And then fast forwarded to having them all done. But I wanted you to see that this is all real time and this is how quick it can take if you know what you're doing. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, if you refer to that article, it's very detailed and it will give you a good idea and it shouldn't take too long to set up a website with a structure. Now, here's what the test blog currently looks like. You can see those pages have appeared in the horizontal nav bar, although they're not in the order that we had. Also, you'll note there's two home pages. Don't worry about that for the moment. That'll disappear in a couple of steps. You'll see that happen. So let's go back to the dashboard, get rid of that preview, um, and we will alter that, start doing some tweaking to get the layout looking like how we want. Right, the first thing that we want to do is we want to alter the order of how those buttons appear in the horizontal nav bar. And the way you do that is you click on edit for each page and you go over here to the order field here. And by default, it's set to zero. And every time you create a page, it will be set to zero and WordPress will sort it alphabetically. Now we don't want that, we want it to be sorted in a specific order. Um, you notice the blue publish button has now changed to update. Every time you make a change that you want to keep, you need to press update. So that's done. If we go back to the pages menu and we can do the next one. Um, and the next one we want to do after home page, we want products to be page two. So if we press edit there, and again, I'm going to do this all in real time and go through it. You'll, you'll get the gist of it. But you'll see, again, I want you to see how quickly it is to do these edits in WordPress and set up your blog stroke website so that it looks pretty professional pretty quickly. Okay, after product, we want blog to be number three. 
So let's press edit on blog. Okay, and we go back to the order button, press three. Again, I apologize for the internet being a fractional, fractionally slow tonight. Not normally, um, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. I pressed add new. We want it to be on edit. And the fourth one we want is resources, which is there. Let's click edit. Again, order. That's the fourth button in our nav bar or the fourth item in our nav bar. So once that's updated, you can go back to pages. We want the fifth one, which is contact. Okay, and press edit. And once you've done this a few times in WordPress and you start to get familiar with the dashboard and the, the various items that you need to edit, it becomes very quick and easy to either set these things up, set pages up in the orders that you want, or it becomes quick and easy to make edits or add content. We'll see in part two of this, we'll look at content about. Now the about, you'll see there's already some text on this page. That's because this is a standard page when you create a new WordPress site on the wordpress.com blog. It comes with an about page um, as standard. So we've got one more page to do, which is subscribe which is there at the top. And if you notice, I don't know if you notice there, but when we were in the page menu and looking, we could see all the pages, they were all in the order that we just put them um, with the, using the numbers in the order field. We'll, we'll click on pages and you'll see that um, it would go there. So we've got them in the order we want. Now you notice if you hover the mouse over a page, you get this mini menu appears, so you can use it to go and check what pages look like. So let's click on here on the blog page and press view and we're going to see how the blog's looking now. So you can now see that we've got the horizontal nav bars looking more like we want it. We've still got the two homes um, but that's okay that will disappear in a minute when we we come to do a couple more changes. So you can see we're starting to get the layout in shape. So let's go back to the dashboard and go to the next step. And the next step is to change, what I want to do is two things I'm going to do. I want to change the static page layout from the default template, which is a two column layout. And I want to make the static pages a one column, no sidebar layout. And you do that in this template section in the page attributes part of the of the page. So we'll do that and press update. Okay, when that's done, yep, that's done. We go to pages again, which is like your master menu, and we'll check all of these. Products again wants to be one column, no sidebar. Now the blog page which is the next in the list once this is published or updated and we go back to the main pages menu. The blog page I want to leave as the standard template which is two columns with a sidebar. Um, that's a standard kind of blogging look. So it's only the static pages that I'm doing this edit to. But if you go and look at the One Spoon at a Time website and click on any of the static pages you'll see the effect that I'm getting and the reason why I want the layout to be like this. So it basically it gives you a much cleaner look on those pages where the content, once you've got the content that you want in, is pretty much going to stay the same bar minor edits as your website matures, whereas the blog settings or the blog pages where you're adding new posts are going to have much more... Um, changes to them and having the two column setting the default setting if you like allows you to have the kind of things that you normally associate with a blog where you can have the list of recent posts or you can have your blog role links to blogs that you like and want other people to see you, who you want your readers to see so that's why we're doing this but we don't want that on 
every page of the website, certainly not on the static pages, um, because those static pages, we'll come to this in later parts or, or later articles on the website, those static pages, we, we want people to take certain actions or read certain information on those pages. So that's why we're doing this step. So now that's done and those pages are all set like that, the next step that I want to do is I want to go to the uh, header graphic and change the header graphic. Now that's in this appearance submenu, which is if you click on it, it extends out like you just saw on the left hand side of the dashboard. If you click on header, here's the uh, graphic, the f this flower graphic that they're using. Now with this theme, if I scroll down, you can see there are eight other options that you could choose from if you wanted to. And let's say you wanted this sunset, you wanted to be your default graphic on your header, you would just click that um, and then go down and press save changes however we don't want that so we'll unclick that or we don't need to we want to load a graphic that I've created um, which is the one spoon logo and if you press I just browse to it on my computer I'm just going to press upload and you notice here it says if you're uploading your own graphics it should be 940 by 198 um, I created this graphic in Photoshop um, and I made it exactly that size 940 by 198 so that it doesn't crop or anything like that. Um, so that's how the graphic looks. It gives us the option to visit the site. And now you can suddenly see that the site's starting to come together and look a bit more like it. One more thing we've got to do. Um, just click resend there for Firefox. We've got to change the default page where blogs, blog posts are posted and we do that in settings and in the reading submenu from settings. Now you see at the top here it says the front page of the website which for most websites is the home page displays your latest posts which are your blog posts whether they're short posts whether they're longer articles or whatever. What we want to do is we want the front page to display a static page and in this front page drop down it'll give us a page and we obviously we want home and that will then that will be the front page of the website so if you only type the website name one spoon at a time dot com you'd get taken to that page that we created the home page which was a static page the posts page we want to be blog when people come to read our blog that's a movable and changeable part of the website that's where we want them to go so to make those changes take effect we need to press save changes okay and then if we go back to the pages site or pages page click on home and clasp view suddenly we've got a website that looks very similar to the one spoon at a time dot website let me just click to that as well so you can see there's the one spoon at a time website obviously there's minor differences I've got some content in and on the test website I called it Paul's test blog at the top and there's a, there's a bit of text there but essentially that's it I'm not sure how long that that's taken but it's 15 to 20 minutes nothing further than that and we've got a perfectly serviceable professional looking website that's ready for us to put content on which will be the next stage of the process and the next screencast and article.